Hey, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, I'm really excited to chat with you. I mean, you know, genre bending right down the middle. Like, it's got the comedy. It's got the thriller. Do you notice that immediately when you're reading the script for the prank? Absolutely. I, I, I call this movie, it's like a like a Long Island iced tea. It's yeah. got a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. That's actually perfect. And I feel like, for me, the comedy definitely stands out, but it definitely takes some moments where it's like getting really kind of more serious because these characters are just decision after decision, right? Just not making the best decisions, getting themselves in trouble, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it can be really dark, which, it, which is really fun to play. We sort of walk that very thin line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I, what excited me about this is, you know, Maureen, I mean, the Golden Arm is like one of my favorite movies of all time. Like I, that, I love that movie so much. I'm a big wrestling fan and everything. So I was excited like that. What's that like kind of working specifically with Maureen? Because it's not the first time you work with her. Right. I, I was in Golden Arm. I, that's when I first worked with her. I love Maureen. And that's why I was on board with the prank. When she asked me, I was like, anything you want to do uh, and you want me to do it? I'm in. I totally trust you. She just she's really smart, really funny, really kind, and uh, you know these indie films. We don't have a lot of time no. or a lot of money to waste, so you gotta hit the ground running. And uh, there's nobody I'd rather do that with than Maureen. She's the best. And from like an acting storytelling perspective, how separate are past kind of journeys that you've been on? Whether it's The Office, whether it's Golden Arm. Like, do you ever take maybe not the characters because Meredith is Meredith. <laughs> It's very like, yeah. no, but like, like from just preparation and just kind of the cast and crews, do you ever take things from certain projects to other projects or are they separate? Uh, I think they're a little separate. I mean, I think obviously the common denominator is me. And uh, I don't know if you knew, like I'm a, I'm a bar owner's daughter. My dad owned a bar in Philadelphia. So um, I understand uh, a lot of different people. I, I feel like I was exposed to a lot of different people at, yeah. at a young age. When I was 17, 18, I was a concert promoter. I started wow. at a young age. That it, you meet a lot of cool different people, and I did a lot of different genres. So you meet a lot of different people because metal bands, of rock course. bands, folk yes. bands. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wild! It's yeah, pretty... but you know, I think I think that stays with you. I think that informs you, and I don't know. I think it sort of makes you focus on how we're alike as opposed to how we're different. A hundred percent. More compassion for people, a little more sense of humor with everybody. You yeah. feel a little more. Well, you know, it's I. I feel like. We're all connected. Everybody's a douchebag. And yeah. everybody's great. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, the office and Meredith are like Meredith's never going away. And I feel like at some point you I feel like at one point you kind of just accepted that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, we have the best fans in the world. The office fans are the greatest. And I I I'm I'm not one of those actors that doesn't want to talk about something I did years ago. Bring it on. I had a great best nine years of my life. It's one of those shows that continually, I think like every day there's like thousands and thousands of people that like consistently just continue watching the show one way or the other the devotion is real for the office it is real absolutely and you know getting back to the prank quickly it's interesting because you know i'm on the edge of my seat figuring out if they're going to get away with this what's going to happen what's like what what the school's involved like what's the school's angle because at some point i'm like what's the school's angle like i feel like they know a lot <laughs> So are you ever conscious of the audience member watching the prank while you're making it? Or does that kind of happen afterwards? Well, I mean, not while we're making, yeah. making it because you, you, you're never exactly sure how, how it's going to, you know, uh, what's going to make it uh, in the final cut. But we went to South by Southwest last year and it was really great to be uh, with a live audience who had no idea. And, you know, they, you got to, you know. You gotta pay attention. Don't go to the bathroom. Pay yeah. attention. Yeah, pay attention. And, and you know what? It's in the theater, so they have to put their phone away. But when they want, when it comes to streaming services, when they watch it at home, they gotta put their phones away. Phones down because you're gonna miss I things. I think so. I think so. It's, there's so many twists and turns. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't, you don't to... March 15th, it's the prank in theaters. Kate, it was an honor and privilege to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.